Hi guys! Today is a product review day. We got a wonderful differential probe from Mixic. Mixic is a company that makes test probes and also oscilloscopes. Different kind of test probes, different kind of oscilloscopes. And guys, I recommend you to take a look and check their products. They have the new generation of touch screen tablet scopes. These kind of oscilloscopes, they are very good and they include a computer inside for the engineers who works in fields. It will be a wonderful tool to work with. Take a look to the products, visit their webpage. This is the product we are going to analyze today. I will leave the link down below. If you buy from this link, I will get a little commission and that will be a nice way to support this channel. Music has three kinds of differential probes we can find now in the market. The O7, the 13, and the O3. The O7 GP0007 will be the best one you can use as category one in the case of you want to deal with electronics in the workbench. If you are not in electronics, you are directly in the electricity field you are in America, Japan, and you have to connect your unit directly to the 120 volts, 100 volts AC to the main lines. I recommend you strongly the model 13 because you will be in the range of the maximum uh, voltage you can apply to the unit. It's 120, 100 volts, America, Japan, and the unit is 130. You will not damage the unit. If you are in Europe, um, countries with 220 volts, 240, and you connect the unit not to electronics, directly to the main lines, you will need the model O3 because it's for 560 volts. But also, you have to analyze and wonder yourself, what do you need the unit for? As example, if you are working in the workbench, but you are creating inverters, like this one, as example, you don't know how high will be the discharge in your coils and you don't have any data yet until you make your experiments in your hobbies. In that case, I strongly recommend you guys to now get this model, get the other models that are for high voltage. Differential probes are very useful and probably we will need no one but two of the models depending what we are going to do like anything in electronics. The O7 will be the best model for the ones who work in the workbench in category one with low voltage. Now, let's go to know about the product. Let's remember guys, when we use high frequency, we must twist the cables and that's a good practice to eliminate the parasitic capacitance and keep the line in a common mode. This is the setting we're going to use. In channel one, the green one, I'm going to use an adapter BNC to banana. I switched alligators because it's more comfortable to work with it. And also as a smaller they are, they let me to work with high frequencies. I try to stretch the cable to the maximum to approach, to be able to get high frequency with it. I twist it as is recommended to eliminate the common mode. And I'm using a 50 ohms terminal terminator there. For the reference signal, I'm using also a 50 ohms terminal. And from the MISIC GP1007, I'm going to fit the unit from the oscilloscope USB port and the output. I try to stretch the maximum I could the cable and is in channel 4, the green one. Now let's see what can we get 
from it. This is the moment we are waiting for. With one kilohertz in the yellow output, we have the reference signal. And with the green one, is the signal we are injecting to the MISIC differential probe. Also one kilohertz, both one volt peak to peak. And let's see the result. Reference signal and MISIC differential probe output in green. Now let's play hard. 1 megahertz, 1 volt peak to peak. And the output signal is exactly the same than the input signal. Ten megahertz, one volt peak to peak. Now, because the cable characteristics, I'm getting a little bit of losing in the signal in the input and a little bit of wind in the output. Also, there is a little bit of phase shift and this output signal is lagging to the input signal. Let's make this telling shorter. Let's jump to the 100 megahertz. In 100 megahertz, the output signal, the green one, is ahead of the input signal, the yellow one. For both signals, there is a little bit of voltage drop. Anyhow, to follow the output to the input, guys, this is incredible because this unit is what the specification said. It's working in 100 megahertz, and I want you to pay attention to the noise level in the output. Making a zoom, we can watch that the noise level in the output is almost the same of the noise level in the input. And I am working with just one volt peak to peak. This other part of the video will be very interesting because we got some information that says 700 volts maximum. What is 700 volts maximum? Is 700 peak to peak RMS? Okay guys, when we don't get that information, we must assume it's always peak to peak. It's like when I told you if the product doesn't say if it is category one, two, three or four, you must assume it's category one. Here we are going to apply the same rule. If we do have a specification, if it is AC, DC, peak to peak RMS, we will assume we are talking about peak to peak voltage. And about 247 volts is seven volts peak to peak. Guys, I'm connecting a microwave transformer, the output, I'm testing the transformer with an oscilloscope. And this is what I got.
about 700 volts peak to peak. And this is what we use the differential probe for. I can test the AC voltage from the network, from the main lines, with the differential probe. That's the proper way to put the oscilloscope on it. Other ways, we will blow the oscilloscope with the ground lead if we invert the polarity on it. Also, for the guys who work in electronics, we work in category one, always in the other side of the power supply, in the DC cold area, not the hot, and we use a variable transformer for it. Let's remember what the hot area and the cold area mean to us. As you watch it guys, the device is under the specifications and we can connect the main lines without any problem with the ground system, with the oscilloscope, without blowing the oscilloscope or any other device. It's not only for the oscilloscope, we can use it with the digital multimeter. We are going to make more videos about it and to get more application videos. Also for the Electronics Academy courses, we are going to apply it. Today, we connected without any problem a microwave transformer to an oscilloscope. But it's important, guys, to know the capability of your device. If I want to test the maximum voltage of this transformer, it depends not only of reducing the input voltage to get the ratio to the output I will get by it, but if I want to apply the maximum, in that case, I need to go for the next model, probably. And this is important for us to know which kind of MISIC differential probe we need. If you are just in the lab, like me, fooling around a little bit, probably, probably this is the best one for a CAT1. If you are going to design systems like the inverters or something like that, probably you will need a higher voltage for it. You are welcome to visit the MISIC page and to check around the products. There is a link under the video and if you want to buy one, you will help the channel too. I will get a little commission for it. Thank you guys. Guys, so far so good. I like the toy. It's incredible. We are going to play more with it and see you next time for more videos about electronics. I hope you like it. Many of you many times ask it about how to not blow the oscilloscope. I will show you how to not blow the oscilloscope and how to get the differ differential measurements in different ways, even without this device. And at the end of the day, you are going to make your comparisons, your conclusions, and you are going to tell me which one do you like most. But that will be in a future video. See you next time, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and to give a like if the video was worth it to you. Bye bye.